Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Daily Tips show here on the Inspired Business TV channel. With myself, Gary Setterfield, and my good friend and business partner, Mr. Suki Wahiwala. Now in today's episode, we're going to look at cash flow secrets and the traffic light system, which Suki has devised. If you remember back to cash flow um, episode six, we looked at cash flow actions during COVID and we thought because of the comments we had and the, the likes, etc., from that show, that we would look more at cash flow generally to help people understand what they're doing. Hi Gary, thank you very much team and the Inspired Tribe and everybody who follows us. I hope you're thoroughly enjoying these daily tips shows as they're being as they're evolving because we're now moving into a new phase of positive energy when it comes to the lockdown. If you look back and you look at episode seven, episode six, episode one and two, we're talking about how the mindset, the structure, and how we can keep us moving forward. But this is gonna be a power packed event. So please, in the comments, do let us know how you're enjoying this and what you'd like to hear about next. Thank you. And remember folks, that there is a power tip roundup at the end of this episode, just to help you with what we've discussed. So Suki, talking about the cash flow secrets, what made you devise this traffic light system? Oh, Gary, um, it's really quite simple. What we, what I did is over the years, I've been looking, uh, been blessed to look back at what actually I did well uh, in the sense of uh, cash flow, keeping money coming in, money going out, but keeping that ultimate balance and being on it, as we call it, you know, that kind of thing, being on top of the funds. If you'd asked me when I was in my uh, retail era of my life, uh, any particular price, you know, 22, 28,000 SKUs, that means part numbers. If you'd asked me any price, I would have told you four or five, actually, depending on what product it was, different price points. For example, what we bought it for, what the regular wholesale price is, what our retail shop price was, what our online price was, and what our wholesale and trade price was, etc. So it was all up there in the brain. So I started to think, what was it that was making uh, it possible? Does that make sense? Most people suffer from uh, memory losses or they think they have a memory loss. Don't forget neuroplasticity, what we talked spoke just, uh, I think in episode, I think it was eight, uh, about DFT, how we can construct our and reconstruct our brain to make it functional um, and to recall our memory better so we can rebuild that function within our mind. We can also rebuild our control on finances because finance is not there to, to cause us a problem it's there to support us we should earn money we should earn it in abundance so that we can do more with it that's the underlying process so the real reason why i did this is because i wanted to help all of our tribe and anybody else i could get through to hence why the whole of this series is going on to youtube with yourself gary so that we can help other people to take the handle and reduce their cost expenses, etc., during this COVID period. Fascinating, thanks, Suki. So we know why you did it. So, so let's go through what is the traffic light system. The traffic light system, Gary, is something that is is quite complex, but it's understood in a very simple format. That is what the Synegus method stands for, which is the methodology that I've written, and that incorporates the DFT, which is the Daily Focused Time Method, the Direct Focused Thought, for example. And also, many, many different versions, you know, like Power Notes, Power uh, uh, Power Meetings, etc., Power Coaching, but also the Traffic Light Cash Flow System. So, what is the Traffic Light Cash Flow System? Can I? I'll go through that slowly and with everybody so we can all get it. So, the Traffic Light, if we just liken it logically to a traffic light uh, in town. So you have a, a red, an amber, and a green. So let's just start with the process of what the traffic light system or what a traffic light means. Um, logically, red means stop. Amber means get, it means stop if it's coming from green, it means stop. And if it's coming from red, it means a dual understanding. It says get ready to move doesn't mean go it means get ready to go get yourself faculties correct then we go into the green light which means go it's very simple so if we translate this information um into a philosophy an understanding of framework i mean if you can imagine being able to literally have a simple three-step process like that on every element within your financial life that i think would be quite powerful wouldn't it mm. so Absolutely. in 
yeah so in context of that going back to the red it means if we translate it to cash flow which is the traffic light system in red color it means non-urgent you could say spontaneous spend excess spend things that had no thought behind it spontaneously um shooting from the hip that kind of thing gary and also when this was absolutely unnecessary for example um just waking up one day and deciding to order pizza when the house is full of food for example just because i wanted a flavor taste a change so that kind of thing or taking a journey somewhere which was not on the agenda at all just because i wanted to be free that kind of thing so it's those kind of by the hip spontaneous purchases such as if i explain when you walk into a shop and you think oh that looks nice i'll tell you what i'll buy it even though i may have 15 t-shirts that are very similar at home i'll buy it because it looks great does that make sense Gary? yeah it does totally okay so now the principle of that that's red equals uh, unnecessary not urgent and spontaneous purchase with no conscious thought is we're talking about conscious spending much same as conscious eating conscious spending this is the power behind the traffic light system with my method synergus method so going to the next one which is amber uh, well actually i'll go to green first and then the amber makes more sense green is absolutely necessary urgent or not necessarily urgent but necessary important is the one i was trying to look for and something that's been well thought through and consciously spent yeah so on every level it feels good it's it's hygienic it's mentally good it's emotionally good and it's probably nourishing to the soul to the mind to the body so it could be something very simple like buying your weekly food spend or your your income yeah that kind of thing you're or putting um effort into taking your food with you because that's obviously very much a covid hygiene thing buy your raw materials wash them cook them at home and take them with you if you've got to go to work instead of buying from outside shops etc because we can't control the hygiene levels there so the green is a do spend a, an, a conscious spend kind of thing where you look for a new um, insurance for your car your house your whatever and you've done a good assessment you've paralleled more than three you've done three different quotations and you've selected the best one that matches you there's a conscious algorithm gone behind it that says that was a good spend yeah and it was necessary because even though we classify insurance spends as grudge purchases that's a key thing to remember a grudge purchase is something when you'll probably pick it up in the power tips roundup at the end but a grudge purchase is very particularly something that is necessary but not by choice like insurance road tax and stuff like that. so they're the things that we're trying to think that's a grudge purchase because we don't really want to buy them but we can't actually legally run around in the country or road tax or go and get an insurance but we drive without insurance on the public road in england for example so amber now we go to the amber color what is an amber spend an amber spend is something that fits usually into a red spend so it could be like a, a sandwich could i did i have all the raw if i make it really simple here gary could i have all of the raw material at home could i easily have made a sandwich before i went out for work just giving you a simple example if i may so could i have done that at home could i have easily um, made my sandwich go to work and take it with me which is a green spend now if we go with a complete principle that i've got all the stuff at home but i'm out and i can't be bothered which is the word i'm looking for the hyphenated bothered to go and make it before i go to work or i can't be bothered to make it the night before i can't do preparation i'd rather just wake up 10 minutes before i need to go and do all that sort of stuff the mindset is showing yourself that you're not consciously aware of things you're just taking it in a frivolous way um what happens there the signs are that you're going to go out and you're going to get hungry and you're going to buy something from the shop right so there, even though it is a red, a green spend like food, food is necessary, it's nourishing, it's our important part of our life. What happens there is that you've got the food coming into your system, but because it was unplanned, it becomes an amber because it was something you could have done at home, could have made and saved a bit of cash flow money. Um, and obviously this COVID period of time, COVID-19 and this lockdown, just being aware and being conscious and being um, aware of the fact that you could have prepared at home to keep the bacteria 
or the virus at bay and go to work taking it with you or going out to take it with you like a picnic that then becomes a necessity but it means a necessity that was unplanned and you had to do it so it becomes uh, if you went to the shops and just bought it for the sake of it it becomes a clear red spend you could have done without that the, the green spend very clearly was i could prepare it at home but an amber is when you got you've got caught out and somebody's asked you to do something on the spur of the moment and it's necessary this is food but it was an unplanned thing and you're out and you did not have time maybe a scheduled order or a, a job interview you couldn't prepare enough and you'd go and do something quickly and you'd have to go and quickly go out and buy so you eat which is necessary it becomes an amber because it was unplanned but it was a necessity it was a green but here's the key if you keep doing that then that amber becomes a red so does that make sense and i'll talk to you about scale and how to use this in a moment is that is that clear enough there gary very clear and it, it's it certainly works on the traffic light systems that we do when we drive you you immediately know stop go think about it get ready and it's very much falls into that um, into that category so just come on to that next point then Suki. so how do we implement this um and and how do you work it in your daily life wonderful okay so how would one do that so it's very simple um, you've got the framework of the traffic light system telling you not at all necessary, unnecessary, necessary, and floating in the middle. So if I used one example, may I? I've used food already, so I'm going to use something like insurance, if that's okay. So let's look at car insurance for a second, just to give you an example. So car insurance is a necessity. So logically, it should, it's legal, it's by law, must sit into the green band. Is that fair? So it's a, a necessity. It is illegal to drive your vehicle on the public road without car insurance, third party at minimum. So there is a necessity. This is bound by law. So that's clearly a green spend, isn't it? So how will that change or how will that function? We're talking about consciousness here. This means that if I do not go to market and see if I can get a better quote to try my best to make it the most efficient quote, then what happens is, is that goes from immediately from, if I just say, oh, I'll do, I'll just take the first quote, that's fine. And they say it's a thousand pounds for your car and they say, that's fine, I'll just take it. Without any kind of parallel or any kind of comparison, this basically means that it was a necessity, but it sits into an amber because you did not give it any conscious time. You made no effort to try to reduce your spend there does that make sense? So what happens there is it goes amber. If you go to market and compare properly, minimum three is what I always advise myself and people, so that's my life. You go for three quotes and you pick the best quote. That's the most comprehensive, uh, covers the most things, but also is cost effective as well. That insurance becomes a green, it stays in the green because I made an effort to find out uh, a comparison for it. So that's year one. So annually, the insurance would come due. Is that fair? So every year on the due date, if you just let it ride and let them reinsure you and let it roll over for another year, what you've done is you've spent all that hard work to start off with, which kept it into green. It now automatically starts shifting into an amber because you gave it no attention once again on an annual annual renewal uh, birthday or an anniversary, as we call it. So on that annual renewal date, if you had re-gone to market, rechecked it, that product would have stayed in the green. So here's the principle. If you miss out any kind of comparison for one year, it goes to amber, even though it's a necessity. But if you do it for the second year on the trot, it shifts to red. So the red is the bit that you're paying absolute no attention. So ask yourself a question. When was the last time that you actually actively reassessed your electricity utility bills, your gas bills, your um, home heating uh, repair, your person who comes in and does your annual service for your for your fridge freezer, washing machine, your boiler, your car mechanic, um, MOT bay. Do you try multiple MOT bays or just mindlessly keep going to the same person, even though they may be dearer now? Could somebody else do the job more efficiently? Insurances for your house, car, your job insurances, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these elements should be about actually keeping it active in your mind and double checking and triple checking every year, having three comparisons 
and then making it a conscious decision to stay in the green. So now, how would you apply this? This is the next phase of how would you be aware of whether you're doing good, bad, or not so good in the sense of in the tracking facilitation. So I'll help with that if that's okay with you. Absolutely, please go ahead. Yeah. So in principle, with the tracking side of things, what we have is the, if you can imagine an Excel, or let's look at your bank statements. This is the activity that one should do. This is the action that one should do. Bring up your bank statement and get three color pens. This is the action that needs to be done. How would you implement this in your life? So you have three colors, which is logically, uh, you know, one of those clear markers, which are slightly translucent. So they're not completely marking out the whole coloring. You need a red or a pink. They don't really do very many reds. So it's like a, a fluorescent marker, a, a pink, which will classify as a red. And then you would go with what we classify as the amber and also a uh, very simple green, three colors. You pick up the whole of your Excel, in essence, either an Excel or alternatively, if you have not Excel from the printed out bank statement. And all I want you to do is to grab your bank statement. And if you're looking at an activity, go back three months minimum. And if you can do six months, that's great as well, but three months minimum. So there you've got your bank statement. It's very simple. So you have your bank statement, you've got three colors. If it's something you can remember very clearly, what you do is you mark it off in the green. If it's something you cannot remember, that means at all, you don't know, you know, a frivolous purchase on Amazon for something you didn't really need. I'm afraid you have to use that red or the pink as we're talking about it. And you must mark it off, just one line. Now, if it's something that you can clearly think that you could have done it's not your regular spend, but you need to function it right now. If it was a momentary thing, like in this COVID period, for example, I'll just give you an example of this. You'd need to be increasing your soaps, your hand sanitizers and things. These weren't necessary before, but they're starting to go into what we classify as a, a, a green spend. But here's the key though. You must remember if you're over buying the stuff and sticking it in stock, and it's, it's, it's uh, basically you're spending too much money and you're, you haven't got that facility available. This process will tell you and show you that it's going into the wrong space. So if you bought it regularly every month and you're not using it at all, that must go into amber. So you must clearly make it out as an amber, even though it's a green, but you're buying it just because it's on rotation, Amazon reorder. Does that make sense? So it must go amber if you're stocking up now because you're not paying attention to it. Does that make sense? So it's very simple the way we're thinking about it. So it's, it's, it's really amazing if you take the time to go through your information and do this. So one of the key things that somebody comes up with is what if I've kept withdrawn some cash and I can't remember what I spent it on? Guess what? Tough. You're going to have to mark that off as a red because if you have no memory recall of it, that means there was no consciousness in the spend. So it has to be as red. So the principle is, is you take your three months and you go through every single bank transaction. Now here, if you are finding it uncomfortable, does that make sense? That means you've got stuff around money. This process fixes that for you. Does that make sense? So it helps you to get positive and aware of your cash flow. Can you imagine knowing where you're spending your money, why you spent it? Can you imagine your brain getting used to being actively aware of every single penny spent this would be the most brilliant gift that we could give our next generation our kids our you know people that we're using cash flow all the time can you imagine your children and your nephews and nieces if you don't have your own actually knowing this principle so that when they go forward in life it becomes a necessity or a balance or a natural element that's the power so if you'd start with three months go for each and every one of these markers go through it and surprise yourself what happens is you'll see an awful lot of red and an awful lot of amber and your fib yourself into seeing there's lots of greens here's the key if you haven't got hardly any red you're not telling yourself the truth that means you're not really being fair and open with yourself every single spend on your bank statement whether it's a business or whether it's a uh, personal account should be very clear and you should be consciously aware of it by the way the same methodology is what i utilize to actually purchase companies so we go through the whole process and we see where the excess spend is in the company, something that can't be valued, valued et cetera, by bank statement, by expenses, by costs. When was the last time they reassess their business insurances, their public liability, maybe reassess their rental or their mortgages, et cetera. All these elements are pulled through get together. And then I allocate this into a traffic like investment structure. And after looking at this, I can see 
where our quick wins are in the company. Isn't that an awesome message and a technique to use? The Traffic Light System team works. It truly works. It'll bring your mind to that flow. You'll see where your excess spending is. And if you do this every single month, you will do yourself a favor. All of a sudden, your mind will become active, focused, and aware. And what will happen is, is that your greens will increase. But more importantly, the actual number of transactions will reduce because it'll be relevant to yourself. You see? So it'll stop you from having those frivolous moments where you're going and say, I think I need that and I buy it. Your brain, I've, I've been like this all my life. If you, my children say to me, Dad, you don't buy anything. How comes you don't buy a new t shirt or a new this? And I'm saying, kids, I don't need it. It's not necessary. Until I've worn through it, I don't need it. I hope that's helpful. Absolutely amazing, Suki. And, and I know from the times that you've you've worked this through with people, I, the feedback that we've had has been phenomenal with regard to people who've used the system and found it so beneficial. So guys, what I want to do is just going to go through the, ta the power tip roundup with you. Uh, point one, we looked at why did you come up with the idea? Secondly, we then went through what is the red spend? What does it mean? Um, and basically it's non-essentials. We then looked at the conscious spending. We talked about that. Then we went to the green rather than through amber, which is the important things that need to be spent. We then looked at the grudge purchases uh, you'll have to listen to that one to know what they're about. And then we looked at Amber. And from Amber, we then went to how to implement this system. Looking at it on a, an annual basis, we looked at the power of three and how important that is with regards to not only comparisons, but also looking at colours, which then came into the annual spending, particularly looking at things that we look at annually do we actually take, make the best choices? And then finally, we looked at how do you apply this and tracking it using the power of three, comparing three months. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode 11 of the Power Tip Show, and the Daily Tip Show rather, and I hope that you will subscribe, like, and comment down below. Uh, particularly looking at uh, Suki's official social media channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. Please do make comments. And if there's any topic that you would like to share with us or you'd like us to cover, then please do let us know. Please share with your friends and your family. And once again, from Suki and myself, thank you and see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.